guys, so I think where we left off here, last time we just soft mounted this thing, so we just got a couple threads in, because these are the old bolts, so. Um, I had to wait for new hardware to come in for those, and then back here on the Guibo thing, on the drive shaft, that whole thing's gotta be replaced, so that'll be the first thing, then we'll replace these bolts here, get her snug down, and then throw the axles, or no, we're gonna do the, whatchamacallit, arm first. Um, dang it, I forget what it's called now. Either way, the one arm, we gotta take this brace off, I believe. This is like the extra track brace, this guy. We gotta take that off to be able to fit the exhaust, and then we'll throw that back on later. But, uh, yeah, let's get this baby installed. Should be pretty exciting. Um, got all my stuff here from ShopDap. We'll unbox this and get started. All right, guys, let's start out here. Once again, huge shout out to ShopDap. They made this process so much easier. Um, yeah, it would have been a lot more headache and a good couple of hours of me just trying to find everything I need to find. Basically, it's just all these bags, bolts and nuts. They all got part numbers on them. I have a spreadsheet type thing on my in my uh, email. Oh look, I got all these axle bolts and I don't even need them, but I guess I'll be spared, right? Which ain't bad. Oh, this one fell out of somewhere. I gotta figure out where that one went. But basically a bunch of hardware. Uh, and then we got uh, the drive shaft stuff. Yeah, we definitely need those. Those are drive shafts. These are, there should be a bag of four really long, so I'm gonna assume that's those. This looks like, these are axle stuff. The rest of this, I don't really know offhand. Oh, yeah, it'll be trailing arm or something. Yeah. No, don't know. Got. Figure out which one's which. <laughs> they look about the same. Oh no, one's way bigger than the other, so it should be pretty obvious. Which one goes where here? These. These are huge. They're heavy. You got one. Wow. I'm gonna roll that back over here. Oh boy. Well, I'm not gonna edit that one out. Thank you. <laughs> They're quite the size difference. So. We'll match these up real quick. We'll gank the old one out and uh, get to going. Pretty neat the way this yeah see this one this one I think is the back one yeah for sure it is and it looks way better than mine you definitely can't see through this one you can see through that we'll, we'll do a little comparison here but uh yeah let's get to work so the impact won't get the bolts out of the drive shaft drive shaft and it's not connected to the motor on the other end to keep it still so I'm gonna have to like stick some things through things or try and somehow hold this thing while I break the torque on. It's only just three nuts. And this should hopefully only be like the only difficult part about today, so we'll see. All right guys, so my engine is right here beside the camera. And we got one broke loose already, so I figured I'd show you guys. Uh, I just need to spin it, which way? That's good? Okay. Holding. Uh. You already broke it? Oh, see? That wasn't too terrible. Kind of hurts the hands. Gotta do what you gotta do again. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll, once the new one's on that side, we'll do this all. Oh, torquing that together is gonna be terrible. This is gonna be not fun. I'm gonna, I need to put some gloves on, I guess. That would be a good idea. Ready for the next one? More? Okay, hold on, let me turn the camera. We're gonna make uh, old legs over here. Hammer it off, see what we... Is it connected to the plastic part? Or like the rubber? Uh, I don't know, what did I learn today? Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, a little bit of a flathead and alright, rip her out. 
should be able to. This is nice. Someone happened to do all the dirty work for me. Huh? Yay! Oh. This hunk of junk. Oh, see how you can see right through that. Shouldn't be like that. Not good. Take the new one. See. Yeah. Put an F on it so I knew which way was the front. Which I guess now that it's off, it's pretty obvious. But this one, you can't see through it. Actually, now you can right there a little bit. But still, much better condition than this. You can see, like, really see through it in some spots. So there we go. No bueno. Okay. Bueno. Should have probably paid attention to where that dot was, huh? Wonder what that means. Dang it. All right, so looking here in the book, and I, I can link these down here if you guys want. I've linked them a bunch before and posted them places, but I have this drop box for the Mark 7 and Mark 7 and a half. It also works for the A3, S3, you know, whatever, but it has all these, these manuals and whatnot. Anyway, so going through the rear end, it says to mark it so you know where it went. I'm assuming that's just for like remove and, removal and install. It doesn't really say anything for if you're replacing it with a new unit. Um, but I guess if you marked on this and marked on that where it was, you can use this dot for reference to see where to put this one. But it doesn't say anywhere in there if these are like balanced a certain way from the factory or anything. So I'm going to go back in the video and try and look and see where I made this mark here. I don't think... It'd be nice if it if the new one had this because it, it mentions this in the book that it might have this um, dot so but this new one doesn't have that anywhere so I'm gonna look back through the footage here see what we can figure out well we really couldn't find anything if this really needs to be in a certain position or not so we're just gonna send it but uh, we're seeing we need torque specs for bolt eight. 8 is going into the drive shaft and 9 is going into the diff. So 8 is 50 nm plus 90 and 9 is 60. So I'm going to have to hold this thing still while she torques it and it's not going to be a good time. But here we go. Let's get this thing on first, I guess. All right, guys. So what I have right here is new hardware. Boom. So we look at the part number there. Once again, shout out to Shop Dap. 103921.02. Bring this over here. 103. Ooh. See, I got everything I need here. All the part numbers or anything. So, if any of you guys ever need this list, let me know. I got it in my Google Drive. I'll try and link it down below. I don't know if it'll let me uh, do all that, but. Boom. And if you're old, if you're not new to the channel, new ish, you guys might remember my boy. My boy JZ, he's named after the two JZ, aren't you, Bubba? He's a purebred, purebred Australian Shepherd. He's about two years old now. My good, my good boy. And then we just picked up this fella yesterday. He's in, uh, what is it? Uh, Roddy Great Pyrenees mix. Kind of looks like an Aussie. He's like seven or eight weeks old. Teeny guy. Already having fun in the garage. <laughs> Alright, let's get this thing together. Alright guys, learn from my mistakes. Here we go. Once I got under here, I realized some things. So, Like I said, the old one has a dot. This one does not. This is just some dirt. But, they have dots around the perimeter here. See, there's that one there. It's got that one there. So I'm just lining that up with this one. But they don't line up. Like The holes don't line up at all. So I'm going to go to the nearest hole, which is about, I don't know, 10 degrees off. Mark this one. I'm going to mark this right here. And then on the drive shaft, it has that marking. Oh, well, you can see it. There's like a white dot right here. So we'll get that marked up and uh, make sure that that's where we install it at. I don't think there's anything on the drive shaft itself. That's what you thought I meant, huh? Uh, okay. Well... We should be okay. I don't think it really matters either way, honestly, but we might as well try and adhere where we can. So, yeet. 
she's replacing those I just got these bad boys in hand tight at least I need to figure out look at the difference in uh, like where that nipple sits out versus where this is so it's gonna be interesting trying to get it up there but this thing's like obviously not all the way up so I think once it goes up the angle of this uh, the space between them should increase as everything moves up into the car so we'll see how this pans out all right so I took off my little Leo brace here that went across that way I could have a little bit more play with the exhaust that way I could because these two were like interfering with each other so I can move the exhaust down and now I can push physically push the drive shaft towards the front of the car that way I can make room and get it over that nub as I will show you here. So now I can pull this down. Pull this back. Okay. Now find that spot that I marked. Wherever it may be. There it is. And then well I guess I marked it at the wrong spot. <laughs> Well, we'll have to relook at the other one. I, th I think it should go to this one. So we were having some issues first, trying to figure out how to hold this side still while we torqued the other side. I guess it was like, we did 40, 40 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. And she figured out using this Allen. Uh, sorry, there's like so much light. Yeah, here in the subframe to uh, stick this through here to hold it. So you didn't even really have to hold it. You just stuck it in and let it rip. Oh, so you held on to this side. Hold on. Dang. Well, that kind of worked out then. Look at you. High five. So, update here. We got everything torqued down. Um, this torque wrench, wherever I sat it now, my roommates, I'm pretty sure it was broken because it felt like that one drive shaft bolt was starting to come like to shear. I'm pretty sure that torque wrench is broken, like not calibrated whatsoever. So, I'm going to have to order new bolts when I order all the engine hardware from ShopDap. Um, just for a peace of mind, I stopped torquing it. It's supposed to be 45 foot-pounds, basically, like 44 something. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead, take these last two out of the front, and uh, replace this front one real quick, and then we can finally start getting all the arms on and everything, and get the uh, drive shaft actually, well, not the drive shaft, but the, whatchamacallit, the subframe we can actually actually put into place now and torque that. So we're going to do this, then we'll torque that, then we'll start putting all the arms on. I'm excited. All right. Using uh, some of her trickery over here. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do this without her again. Good. Oh, she's off. We had a nice attention to how that was on there. Oh, yeah. We'll mark that real quick. And compare. All right, there isn't much difference at all other than one's painted black and one's silver. I really didn't even need to replace this front one. I mean, there is like some ugliness to it. You know, 80,000 miles of, you know, bullshit will do that. But really, it doesn't look all that bad. I've never taken it off before, so this is what she looks like. I mean, this side, I mean, these sides are basically identical other than being dirty. The other side is, is where, I think I just like the, it's not even really cracking. It's just like the first like coating or something on it, but we'll throw it on. I look in the book here, see if there's any indicators of anything, but find the torque real quick and get her done. What are y'all crying about, huh? What's up? What's up, little guy? What's going on? We need to pick a pick a name for him still. I think Nitto's good. We got we got Jay Z here after the two JZ. Oh, good boy. Anyway, going back over here. We're looking at number two, oh, focus, number two going into the drive shaft. Number two, 50 plus 90. Let's get her done. Okay, Google. What's 50 nm to foot pounds? 
Here is some information from the web that might possibly help. On the website asknumbers.com, they say, one newton meter is equal to 0.73756214728 oh. foot pound FTLB. Wow. What's 50 newton meters to foot pounds? 50 newtons meter is approximately 36.878 foot pounds. Thank you. Not a problem. Come out here to clean this clean these off before I throw it on and this one bushing is totally destroyed like no bueno it's broke there it's broke on this side like I, I like I didn't even like have to touch it it just like kind of fell apart so um don't know what to do about that I'm gonna hit up 034 hopefully they'll send me a new one oh well I have been taking my time on everything today. These, these came out real good. They're nice and clean, looking brand new. I love me some 034 stuff. Ain't gonna lie, but uh, yeah, this is gonna need to be definitely replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and install everything as normal, and then when these bushings come in, I'll just pull it back off and, and do them real quick, throw some new grease in them. Now that there's no grease in them anyway, I just need to wipe it off a little bit more. Power washer didn't like getting down into these, uh, crevices anyway now we can throw the, those those arms on and then from there we can do the axles torquing all those axle bolts is definitely going to be a pain in the ass there's six on each side i got them out with the rear end on the ground um i know i'll at least be able to like put them in there and get them at least a little snug but torquing them down might have to wait till the car is on the ground or at least i don't even know how did i do it before oh i put a screwdriver and a rotor so actually with her here hey i won't be able to talk them easy i don't know what i was thinking sweet let's get her done all right so we got pictures taken of the bushings to send the 034 tonight uh wishbones and what is it a sway bar sway bar end links all that's cleaned up i also did the same thing to the like hubs and stuff here uh clean them up took that that wire brush to them clean them up a little bit don't really care too much for the axles this isn't really much of dirt it's whatever but everything that actually is going back on the car is clean uh these are being sold i got the new ones coming soon the anti-lift or anti-squat ones They're gonna be super dope but we'll actually we probably, probably won't even at all we'll probably just leave them i don't want to put no scratches on them for the next guy so those will actually go in the trash and if you get these or just reuse the ones you got but whatever we gotta sit here and get these to the right size stick some bolts through them here actually they almost look right but we gotta line these up where's the other ones get these over here line these up to the proper size and uh yeah but first took down the subframe we'll get that on and then we'll start doing the arms the other arms okay reading the book here before we even tighten the subframe down completely it says to put the wishbones in and they actually came with new hardware for the wishbones to the subframe. And they go this direction. So the nut side is on the, you know, if you're looking from the back, it goes like this. Nut, nut is on that side. So we'll set this up in there. And it says to torque the subframe after that, 90 plus 90. Um, so I'm not going to, like, tighten, tighten down anything completely, completely until, because you got to have, like, the, the weight. Up the full weight of the car on the suspension whenever you do alignments and all that jazz so i'm gonna leave like things that you adjust um not tight tight so um because it's gonna need a line so man can't believe we're actually putting this together now i'm a little nervous a little tired Whew. once it's done we still gotta mess around with the re46 we gotta raise the car so it's been a long day so far, kind of, not really, but I'm getting down to the nitty gritty now, I'm pretty excited. So, let's get her done. There's not going to be very much light under here. I apologize in advance. Alright guys, here we go. Start cutting these zip ties off. We have a lot of 
things to hold on to while we attempt to put this on. Oh god. There's a uh, I'm going to keep these in place while we Alright, so you keep your hand on that one Alright Where's the bolt? Hopefully I can see, I think I'm in the way of the camera completely, am I? That should be able to see shit There's the nut this is not one there we go oh Facing the right way? Yeah. Doesn't feel like it's in that groove though, is it? How do we fix that? There we go. Why does this not want to go all the way down? That's the problem. Said to go this way. Oh, is there a washer that needs to go? It's like we have a thick ass washer. Alright, you're good. That's one I gotta figure out. Because they have uh, whatever it's called, like not threads right there, so it's a little bit thicker. Maybe I just gotta hit it, but we'll see. It's starting to look like a subframe now. Or a rear end, I guess. There's a hole. Well, those arms are on. Alright, now we can torque these bad boys. 90 newton meters plus 90, I believe is what it said. So, and there's a specific order. It says right front, left rear, left front, uh, right rear. So we'll go in that order and we'll get it all snug down. We'll do just a couple turns on each until we get it up there and then uh, give them the torques. And then from there we'll do axles and hubs and then the other two arms on each side. Not too bad. Like I said, we're not like tightening a lot of the arms down down because they're, they're going to need um, adjusted. but. The subframe will be in. These can actually be torqued down once there's like I could just kind of lift these up and make it parallel and then I can tighten them because they need to be tightened when the suspension's level. So, but all the rest I'll need weight on them to really because this isn't an adjustment point anymore. We zeroed this, this spot out. So, sweet. So it says to do these in a specific order for a reason. I didn't mess it up or anything. I just want to let you guys know. You want to like basically go in a circle and raise them up. So do like five here, five there, five there, five there. And then five, 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 five. Until you get, I don't know, a couple millimeters away. Make sure everything's level. If the screws are hard to put in, you're going to have to have like, I have her on the, on the, on the wrench and I'm like under this thing pushing up in certain places like when it was when this when the bolts were kind of hard to get in because it was it needed to be like you know things had to move perfectly but now if my hands were strong enough like I, I could just spin these right out like they're aligned perfectly you know so they're not like even at any angle at all so it's just easily real easy going in so that's making sure because these these are machined like just perfectly like tolerances tolerances to make sure this thing's aligned so if it's you know, off one little bed and it's hard to get, you know, if one bolt's going to be hard to get in, they're all going to be hard to get in. So once you get it all, you know, you're going in that circle, like it, it's going to fix itself. But don't just try and slam one in and then do the rest or anything crazy like that. So we're, we're about like two millimeters from torquing it. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and do the final hand tighten and then it's 90 newton meters plus 90 degrees. So this is exciting. I'm so excited. I wish I could drive the car like immediately. What's up, silly guy? Hi. Say hi to the camera. Okay, 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 okay. What are you doing? Huh? 
at that puppy breath, don't you? Huh? Smelling like teen spirit. What's up? Oh, you're gonna bite my face off. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. All right, we gotta get the torque in. Go grab that torque wrench for me, would you? Go grab that torque wrench. Okay, 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 okay. I apologize for the lack of clips here, uh, but it's subframe store, it's just bolts, you know? And so subframes in, torqued. Uh, these are in, not torqued. Uh, next up, we're gonna do the um, upper wishbone or control arm, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna put those in, not tight, to support the axle and all the brake stuff. So um, we're just gonna slip that in, go up here. We're gonna match them up in size to the OEM and then slip them on in. Ladies and gentlemen, so I got the bolt through on the OEM matching up the length so these are pretty neat there's multiple ways you can adjust you can adjust it through this or like this will also come out of there but there's a specific amount of, of threads that you need and this is still threaded into about right right about here where this bracket starts so there's still plenty in there um, there's also like I can put those washers in there if you guys remember from the other videos that like offset but I'm not using that setting since it's for um, track use and not drag use I don't have camber adjustment on this side at all it's only on this so you can you can adjust camber on this via the subframe itself but anyway so I got this lined up just right and we'll go throw this one in the other side um, yeah and once these are in Get them in there nice and loose, and then next up I can throw the axles and stuff in, so, hell yeah. yeah. Sleepy boy taking his 13th nap for the day. Alright, got this orientation all there and ready. This beautiful, beautiful control arm. God damn. I don't know. If that's going to be too much camber or not, I guess we're going to find out. I only really want like two degrees in the back, so we'll see. But uh, we're going to set this up here, connect the top one first, or slide the axle in, connect that, connect this, and then that sh this should be able to hold the weight while we torque down the axles. And then the only thing left is to put in the uh, toe arm. So watch us struggle. Well, I copyright music. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm gonna slam this here axle in and see how this goes. I gotta be down here somewhere. Axle bolts on the belly. All right, baby, we're ready. Um, should I? Shit, yeah. Pause. Oh, this oh, hope you guys can see in there. Oh, there we go. All right. Cup is in. Yeah. Um. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Push the bolt through on the other side. Okay, there's that. I'll raise this. That's in with the washer? Mm -hmm. okay. Did you see? No. I have no idea if these are lined up or not. Does it look like the bolt holes are? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Damn. Axle boot. Lift up the whole thing. Okay, 
Where am I missing? Okay. Okay. Can't hand screw these at all. Thank God you're here. I would not be able to do this on my own. Almost too snug. We just need to do this bottom one. Nut goes on my side. All right. Pull the whole thing backwards if you can. There you go. Uh, twist it. This door. Oh. Showing the light. Uh, right about there. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Boom. All right. Fucking. Oh my god. How awesome. I, know, I can put the brakes on more. Another day. I got a bunch of shit to tighten this week and adjust, but. Hey, that wasn't too bad, huh? I thought that would be a lot more pain in the ass. I still don't understand what goes right here. I'm confused as F. Or no. No. Yeah, that's the arm right here. Duh. Yeah. Oh, dumbass. I was, like, confused about that earlier. Really. Hmm. Well, fellas. Oh, where's the light at? I'll show this side instead. All right. Axles are in and nothing's torqued yet, really. But uh, I mean, huh, it's in, holding its own weight. Got everything going on up here. I actually forgot to put the dust boots on these spherical end links, whatever you want to call them. So I gotta pull this bolt back out and do that, and then go ahead and do them to the um, toe arms. I need to grab the sway bar stuff, get the sway bar connected in there to those two, right down in there. Boom. And then that's pretty much it. Set the springs in, put the brakes on, bleed the brakes, align it 20 times, torque everything 20 times, Loctite, everything. I mean, there's still a lot of shit to do, but I just wanted to get everything mounted today. Next video, I'm going to show, you know, torquing everything down and whatnot. And then I still the uh, trailing arms that go, you know, from here to here. I haven't ordered those yet, so that's not going to be in for a while. And I'm not going to be able to align it until those are in and... I'll still need to order the alignment kit. So there's a lot of shit still going on, but I do have a lot of trans transmission updates and shit for you guys in the next video. So y'all just stay tuned, but let's get these toe arms on, these dust boots on and go from there. All right, so if anything's been difficult this whole time, it's been these MF and dust boots. This is the fourth one we've done and uh, well, you all have seen us struggle for the first couple, so. Ready? Need to rip some. All right. We did pretty good that time, though. Okay, okay. These things are a pain in the butt. Well, definitely don't try and do these alone. Unless you, there's some special tool to do it or something, I don't know. There we go. Boom. That actually wasn't bad. Less than a minute. Well, we're getting good at it. Well, now the next two we gotta do are actually on the damn thing. So, it's gonna be a shit show. How <laughs> oh, these. All right, guys, so with the toe links here, um, one side is reverse threaded. So when you spin this one way, they both either go out or go in. So um, hold this side. See so when you do this, they're both gonna go in. Do that, they're both gonna go out. So I'm gonna match this up as best as I can with the hole. This is the rubber bushings and everything. It, it's, it's hard to make it exact. So I'm gonna get it pretty close and then match this one up exact with this one. Then we'll throw those babies on. And that's pretty much all I'm doing for the day. I think. My back hurts. We still gotta raise your car, huh? No, it's fine. No? Oh shit. Ding. All right, let me show you something guys. You probably, well, this should explain it. So when the dust boots are on, you have, there's a lot of rubber just like hanging around right here. And you put your little bushings in, they go in, right? Well, normally this lip on the rubber is still gonna be like way the heck down here. Well, with it all bunched up, these bushings can't go in far enough. 
And these things are, I'm telling you guys, they are machine precision. Like this is so precise. Like it has to be perfect for these to go into the right spot. So you have to pull these boots up far so that it doesn't like take up too much space so that these these bushings can, can go all the way in. I'm sitting here with this one for a while trying to get that thing in and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And then of course she comes to save me and uh, figured it out. So she's the winner for the day. I guess I'm, I'm buying dinner, huh? <laughs> well, I am filthy and uh, what a long day. I did not think it would take all that time between the cleaning and the double checking on the measuring and torquing and well, we got this little cute ball of fur here giving us a fun time as well, but man, she's all in. Uh, nothing is torqued down except for the subframe or the, the drive line, basically. Well, not even the axles, so. But I, I, I can't tie everything down until the new trailing arms come in. And uh, now I need bushings for the sway bar and two new drive shaft bolts. Um, I don't know when we'll be continuing videos on the rear end, but I think next week or next weekend we'll start tearing down the motor. Um, yeah, we got the internals we can at least get it all disassembled, get it cleaned, get the block to the machine shop. Anyway. We'll talk about this in the, in, the picture, in the videos to come. Let me show you guys real quick. Here, everything connected. I can't even see it myself. Um, I mean, it doesn't look all that pretty from... This boy will not stop. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, she's all in. Except for, I mean, the spring, obviously, but... This stuff looks... I need to wipe everything down. My greasy hands done. Messed everything up, but... It looks pretty freaking sweet, I think. This shit is dope. Let me get rid of these ugly arms. You can't really even see the good arms. Look at all the good stuff. Yeah. I didn't show doing the toe arms. I told you about the bushings in there. I mean, that's what I was talking about. The clearance of this is exact. Like, exact, exact. And same for uh, right here where it goes in on the subframe. Like, these are perfect. And we ripped a couple. But, I mean, it is like exact, exact. So... Just beware. Um, I gotta pull this this additional bar. You see these two bars look like they weld together. They go across. They attach to the subframe. That's gotta come off so I can put the exhaust on. And they say not to even run this if you're doing drag racing. But I opted for this because it makes the rear end a little more stiff. Um, here I am talking about all this stiff stuff. Hopefully I don't hate the way it feels. I know I'm pretty sure I won't. But. All right, that's enough rambling for today. Hope you guys liked this video. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was very long. I'm gonna be hurting tomorrow, but it's all worth it. And uh, thank my little my little helper up here. The, all right, guys. Any questions, comments, concerns? Drop them down below. Um, catch you on the flip flop.